let's introspect today. All of us, you know, tender, loving, tender youth, and the couples in open and close relationship. Let's together introspect and examine our relationships. This is what I'm going to bring to the table. The sanctuary, um, there, there is two um, major, I would say, when we introspect our relationships, this is what is come about to be, where have our relationships become a place where you go and take a long snooze or unwind after a long stressful work day? Or is it, has it become a sanctuary for your emotions or a captivity where you're taking, you're, you're forgetting everything in terms of what, how you want it to grow just because there is a force or there is um, security of permanence in a relationship which has been given to you. So I want us to really think and introspect our relationships together. While in this introspection, there is two nuggets, let me just give it to you to begin with. And with these two nuggets, um, we will start looking at a relationship in a perspective where what is it that we are doing wrong? Or is it there anything which we are doing wrong? How is it that sometimes we go into a despair? Um, here's the two nuggets. One, our failure to notice the change that our partners are becoming. This is one powerful thing. Everyone is changing. There is a knowledge which is to be acquired. Your learnings are increasing. Your perspectives are getting bigger and bigger. You're changing. Are you changing together? Another perspective, instead of reveal and discover, you're concealing and pretending. You, you're pretending the knowledge which you haven't acquired and you're concealing your true self, your emotions. The marriages, I mean, if you, if you come to think of it, many people are already in deep despair with their relationships. Uh, they're trying to struggle to learn about each other but also the, the marriages which are lasting long aren't necessarily the happy marriages as well. And in fact, a lot of um, couples who are together in the relationship, they are just sticking together for their children, for the sake of their children or religious or um, societal norms. So what is, what is it? What is a secret ingredient? Or I would say a mysterious ingredient. It's mysterious because this ingredient has existed in our relationships all the while, ever since the humanity is coming up. And despite, it's just going to keep hiding us, hiding away from us, unless we consciously go and recognize it. But let's look at my story as well. And this is where, um, me, um, I met my ex-wife, it's a story of separation. I met my ex-wife in Berlin at a nightclub. Um, and in the pulsing synths and the minimal techno of the Berlin music scene, I, we gazed at each other and danced for the rest of the night. We went on for about two years in our relationship before getting married um, with this four, four and a half years of our relationship, um, we ended up, despite of all the time, committing and saying to each other a very interesting and a famous uh, quote, uh, which Ludwig van Beethoven shared it to her, uh, to his beloved um, uh, lover, ever thine, ever mine, ever ours. I mean, if you come to think of it, this separation was breaking the wall of this permanence, which we thought ever thine, ever mine, ever ours, profound, at the same time, doesn't hold. I want to take a quick view at, after the separation, sitting up with a friend of mine in an introspection session, this guy asks me, what do you remember from your marriage, marital life? And he was a smart guy. He wanted to know what sort of emotional valence I'm going to come up with so that he can say, hey, 
do I remember happy memories or do I remember sad memories? To my surprise and to his surprise, I couldn't recall many memories. These are, I mean, we understand. There are a lot of different types of memories in the brain. This particular one is episodic or autobiographical memories where, where my, mem my memory registers bases on certain emotions. Before I tell you the connection of missing memories and um, what it means to find that secret or mysterious vital ingredient behind a relationship or a lasting relationship. Let me introduce you to myself. I work, uh, for the last four years, I've been working in artificial intelligence, um, building machines that can understand emotions. And by that technology, um, we help businesses understand their customers' emotions a lot better, increasing customer delight. This technology is built on a deep learning model, which emulates how the brain's circuitry works in real life. And the most important um, challenges for such systems to overcome is memory retention and attention, which is something very interestingly we are finding out as well in particularly my case when I'm missing those episodic memories. Where is it gone? When it's not that I have completely missed it, there are very few, but I've spent two years of marital life. What was happening there that I was not able to register those memories? Let's go inside the brain. This is um, Gulab who did the illustrations. This is perhaps the most artistic renditions of hippocampus and amygdala. This, this guy in the black and the white balls on top of it. Um, in the world, perhaps, uh, and these, this, this combination, um, which also exists or called as the limbic system in the brain, acts as the guard to what memories are going to get stored and what, what is not going to get stored. The, uh, this is where, I mean, look at it, look at it. There is a gatekeeper for our memories. Why? Brain is funny. I want to quote um, Maria Papova here from um, Brain Pickings, yes. So she goes and she says, memory is a merciless traitor. And on top of that, it's not a recording device. However, it's a tool for creative plagiarism. We'll come to that. She goes on and says, it's also a terrible timekeeper. If we come to think of it, this whole idea of selectively passing the memories inside and also selectively forgetting some of the memories. For instance, the, I, I've, I think I've completely missed a couple of slides because this selective forget, forgiveness, um, forgetfulness, which was induced is also a brain's way of saying how creative it is. Brain, by design, is, a, is built for creativity. And the, the emotions which really need to be carried along to pass the information and get stored as a long-term memory, episodic or autobiographical memory, is um, you, it requires to be a very high emotional value. And this is where um, I'm going to quote a philosopher, Bruner. It's a psychologist. He, he talks about how remarkable this notion of surprise is. And surprise, in fact, is the hallmark of creativity. So if you really want to see um, uh, or immediately store a memory in your brain, you better be surprised or awe. And creativity or creations what you do together is, is one nugget of getting the surprises because creation always surprises us. So here is how I want to connect what happened to me plus what is happening in your relationships and try to see when you go back home, are you co-creating 
together with your partner. Your partner is your team. You also have teams in your offices in, 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 as your friends, and you come and co-create. You co-create products. As an entrepreneur, well, while I was running Airwood, I was co-creating this whole system, and we were selling it. Um, this, this idea of co-creation doesn't exist only to the teams, but it, it can be translated to your homes as well, which is also a team. And it has been existing right since the evolutions of what we know about humankind, and that is procreation. Your child is your biggest co-creativity, and raising them is another co-creation which you're bringing about. Your home, I'm going to mundane things as well. There is a co-creation in everything, in your homes. When you come together, build your homes, this is co-creativity. So co-creation exists everywhere in mundanes as well. It's for you to recognize consciously and take a step forward and co-create together and let the wonder come out. Let me give you two more things on this. Co-creativity also leads to self-exploration. If we don't feel ourselves, then our self starves. And by creating with each other, you're understanding, you're learning about each other, you're going into a sense of wonder, of what we call as conscious unknown. And with this, there is an immense opportunity to learn about each other also. Take a transformation with this learning and growing with each other too. The more self-expansion you're going to go through in your relationship, the more committed you're going to be towards your relationship as well. And there's a uh, substantiating um, phenomena, it's called Michelangelo phenomena, coming from the sculptor Michelangelo who, who would sculpt uh, his creations out. You, as a partner, has an opportunity to sculpt in the way your partner wants to become as well. Remember, you could, do, you could do the harm as well. So carefully recognizing and practicing co-creations is a very wonderful way to go there. So in to summarize, along with my memory, um, which is putting me into this situation where I can improvise, the last one, perhaps from this introspection session, Break out the clay and sculpt something memorable together. Create beautiful memories and go do wonderful things together. Thank you.